Hi everyone, this is Alp Actinus here with the FP and Automation team. Today we have another exciting Power BI video for you where we are going to be talking about how you can set up dynamic role level security within your Power BI model. Now before getting into the actual setup for dynamic role level security, let's talk a little about what dynamic role level security is and allows you to do. Dynamic role level security is the ability to assign an individual's email to a set of values unique to them and to ensure that those values are the only thing that they see within this Power BI report. So within this use case today, we're going to be showing you how based on the organization values that a user is assigned to, how we can set up security so that they only see those specific values related to the ones that they're supposed to see, which in this case will be certain organizations. Now, in order to be able to set up dynamic role level security, you'll generally need to have some sort of table which has a combination of the value that you would like to assign security on, which in this case is going to be the organization, and then the email of the individual that you would like to assign to a certain organization or organizations. Now, generally speaking, it doesn't matter what the data source is for your dynamic role of security table. It can either be from an Excel file, maybe from a SharePoint folder, or maybe it's sitting within an actual database that you need to pull into Power BI. It doesn't matter. For our case, though, what we're going to do is we're going to take a copy of this table, and we're actually going to use Power BI's Enter Data feature, which is located on the Home tab, to be able to create a dynamic role level security table. Now, in order to do this, I have to hit the Enter Data button right here on the Home tab, and then go ahead and copy and paste my values. And you can see right here that the headers have been identified. And now what we can go ahead and do is call this dynamic RLS for the table name and hit load. Now, once this table loads into our model, the next stage that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually set up a connection between the table that we're looking to enable security on and then our dynamic role level security table. So in a second, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to switch to the modeling tab of Power BI so that we can see the actual dynamic role level security set. So I'll go to the model view right here, and now what we're looking at is our transactions table, which is our fact table right here. That's where all of our data is for our income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. And then we have a set of dimension tables at the top right here that connect to that fact table. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drag in the dynamic role level security table to this data model. And the connection that we're going to want to make is going to be between the organization table and the dynamic role level security table because we're looking to assign certain emails to certain organizations only. Now, in order for me to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the country, which is a unique list of countries, to the org table right here. So if I go ahead and connect these two, this is going to go ahead and uh, establish a one-to-many relationship between these two tables. Now, if we double click on this, we can look at that window right here to see that. And we can see that the org has been assigned to the country column, because again, the country is unique here and, and the org is repeating many times. And because of that, we're going to get a one-to-many relationship. Now, the one thing that we wanna do here for this particular relationship that we see is we wanna change the filter flow. Right now, what's gonna happen is if we enable security on this model, we're not going to be able to flow the security filter we want from the dynamic role level security table down to the transactions table to show all of the transactions only related to the organization of the user that is logged into Power BI reviewing the report. So to fix that, we need to change this filter flow right here. And the way I'm going to do that is using the cross filter direction. So if I change this from single to both, and then I check off the apply security filter in both directions, what's going to happen is when we create our security rules, it's going to ensure that not only we're filtering down our dynamic role level security table, we're also going to filter down everything that the organization table connects to. So in this case, our transactions data. Now that we have done this right here, our next step is going to be to go to the manage roles. And within here, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to create a security role for our model. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit new role right here. And I'm going to call this one the dynamic 
RLS security. And what I need to do here is I need to look for the table or tables I would like to base dynamic role of security on. So in this case, that's going to be our organization table. And what we're going to need to do um, is we're going to need to go to the dynamic RLS table and then hit new right here. And we want to assign the email to a particular value, uh, which in this case is going to be something called user principal name. So if I switch this to DAX editor right here, this is going to switch to the DAX editor view. And the one that we're interested in right here is assigning to the user principal name right here and then checking off to make sure that this is working correctly. So once I check this, I should get a notification that this has ran successfully. So it looks like this has been verified and there's no issues right here. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to assign a formula called user principal name to this email right here, to the email column of our dynamic RLS table. So when I hit save right here, what this is going to do now is as soon as we actually test out our dynamic role of security and we test it out with an email that's going to be logged in, it's what's going to happen is that email is going to be recognized here and it's going to be set equal to all the email values that it matches up to. And then for every email value that was matched up, we're going to filter down the table to just those organizations on the organization table. And finally, just the transactions related to that organization on the organization table as well. And that's how we're going to ensure dynamic role of security is enabled on this model. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to quickly talk about that user principal name that you saw me just assign to the email account. Now, what user principal name is, is it's essentially looking at in the, corner, in the top right corner, whoever the user is that's logged into Power BI service. Now, because I'm on Power BI desktop right here, what's going to happen is the formula is going to show my computer name. But when we're actually within Power BI service, so published to Power BI's cloud service, what's going to happen is the user principal name is going to show the actual name of the individual currently logged in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter right here. And for this exercise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the user principal name as a KPI card right here so that you can see how this works. So let me go ahead now and create a KPI card. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to expand this and then look for my user principal name and drag that in. And what you can see here is the name is this odd name right here, laptop-sq767. That's the name of my actual computer. But when we go to test out this rule, we're going to see that this is going to filter down um, to the actual name of the individual when we test this out in Power BI service. Now, let's take a look at our dynamic role level security table. And we're going to test out uh, my name right here, alp at fpnautomation.com, so my email. And what we can see right here is my email is assigned to these two organizations. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ensure that those organizations are, uh, are, are actually showing up when I test out the row-level row security on my email right here. So let's head back to the report view. And to do this, we're going to go to the modeling tab right here. And we're going to go to view as. And what view as allows us to do is it allows us to test out our row-level security. Now, if I check off both of these values right here, this is going to check off the use of this dynamic role security. And then to actually use the email, I need to check off other user and then add in fpautomation.co for the email. So when I go ahead and hit OK right here, this is going to go ahead and change now my model to reflect the dynamic role of security as if I'm logged in as alp at fpautomation.co. And notice that the two countries are assigned right here to my email, uh, which is working accordingly as, as to what we're expected. And notice that the KPI card for user principal name has now flipped to show the actual formula value of alpha at fpautomation.co. So we know that this is working now. So what's great about this is if we switch this to another user, like say, for example, I switch this to Khalid right here and hit OK, so another individual that's on there, the user principal name changes, and then the countries that Khalid in this case is assigned to also change. So now that we know that this is working right here within Power BI Desktop, let's go ahead and let's actually test this on Power BI Service. 
I'm going to go ahead and save this report right here onto my desktop. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser. And right now I've set up a workspace within Power BI service uh, called Role Level Security. And the way I did this was I clicked on the workspace button and hit the new workspace to create a new workspace. Now a quick little trick to publish this report, um, which happens to be a little bit quicker than just hitting the publish button in Power BI service, is using this upload feature. Now when I hit upload and browse, what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to grab the Power BI report I'm interested in loading, which is going to be this one right here. So I'm going to double click on this and this is going to start the process of loading my Power BI report to Power BI service. So you can see right here that we have just successfully loaded the report and now all the various different um, rows are available right here for us to click on. Now, the one that I'm going to actually set up the security on is going to be on the actual semantic model itself. So to do this, we need to do two things. We first need to assign a user access to the model. So in this case, let me go ahead and let's add Khaled right here. This will go ahead and add Khaled. And then in order for role level security to work, you want to make sure that the individual is set to a role, uh, set to the viewer role right here, or else the role level security will not work on the model itself. So ensure that they're set to the viewer role right here. And then go ahead and hit add. Now, when you add them, now you'll be able to set up the second piece, which is going to be the actual role level security itself. So to do that, you will look for the semantic model and then look for security when you hit the three dots right here. And after hitting the three dots right here, you can see that our rule called dynamic RLS is available to us. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna assign myself for the time being so we can test this. And then I'm gonna hit add and hit save. After hitting save, what we can do is we can test out this role now. And now to do that, I just have to hit the three dots for the actual security role and hit test as role. So let's go ahead and let's head back here and let's go back and go to the security. And let's go ahead and test this out. So it looks like I'm going to go ahead and refresh this right here. And now let's go ahead and let's test out that security role as well. And after hitting test his role, this is going to bring us into a very similar view to what we were just seeing before right here. And we can see now that, you know, because I'm logged in as Alp right here, um, I can see that I'm only seeing what I am entitled to see, which in this case is going to be the org country, Netherlands and USA. And if I go ahead and switch this to another individual, we can also test other individuals to see what they'll see. So let's go ahead and let's test Khaled for a second here. And we're going to go ahead and assign Khaled to his email right here. And let's test this as roles. And this is going to be what the user principal name is going to show for Khaled. Now, when I hit apply right here, let's take a look and let's see what's happening. So notice that when I'm checking as Khaled, we're actually getting these errors in place right here. And if I hit see details right here, notice that Khaled does not have access um, to be able to see anything. And that is because he has not been assigned to the uh, security group dynamic RLS. So one important thing to keep in mind here is for anybody that has a viewer role on your Power BI report, you need to ensure that they are assigned to a security role within the security section of your semantic model. So let's go ahead and let's hit back and let's go ahead and edit that so that we can test that out now to ensure that it works. So I'm going to go ahead and search for Khaled's name and check that off right here and hit add and then hit save. And now, as soon as I save Khaled on here, I can go ahead and test this role. And now if we go back here and we go and test out this role as if we were Khaled, so again, I just type in Khaled's name right here and hit apply, notice that the role level security is now working. And that's because Khaled has now been assigned to an actual role level security group, uh, which in this case is Dynamic RLS. But the question is, what if we have a situation where we have an individual that is not supposed to have any security, but they need to have a viewer role, meaning that they can't download the Power BI report or edit the report. So like, let's say, for example, we have Ishan here. 
and then we go ahead and hit add. In order to ensure that Ishan can see the data when he's looking at the actual Power BI report itself within Power BI service, we need to create a placeholder role for role level security within our Power BI desktop report. So Ishan is not going to be an individual we assign to dynamic role level security or to that dynamic role level security role. However, he is a viewer access and because he's a viewer, if we don't assign him to an actual security role, he's not gonna be able to see the data. So to do this, what we can do is we can go to manage roles and then what we can simply do is just call this one no RLS, but let's actually call this viewer with no RLS. That way they can see everything. So as soon as I hit save right here, again, I'm not assigning any filters to this particular role. You can see that there's one on the dynamic RLS, but this one has nothing on it. So when I hit save right here, what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to republish that report. So notice again, if we look at the rules, this, this viewer with no RLS has no filters assigned to it for the role level security itself. And again, we need this in order to ensure that somebody with a viewer access that doesn't need to have any security imposed on them can still see the data. So it's important that you set up a role and assign them to that role, even though there's no security on that role. They need to be assigned to some role uh, in order to ensure they can see the data. So if I hit save right here, and now we head back to our Power BI report, and let's head back to the workspace right here. I'm gonna go and click in the top left corner and then click on my workspace, which is called Role Level Security. And now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is hit the Browse button and then just go ahead and publish my report again and hit Replace it. And again, this what, what this is going to do is this is gonna override the report already existing and we should see that the time updates as well. Now, if we head back to the three dots right here and head to Security, notice that there is now another role called Viewer with no RLS. So to ensure that Ishan can see the data right here, I'm gonna go ahead and ensure that he can see the data by assigning him to this role right here and hitting add. And now when we go to test this role for Ishan, let me go ahead and save this. Now when Ishan is going to be in here, he's going to see the data that he's entitled to see. So if I go ahead now and select the person, I'm gonna select Ishan right here and hit apply. Notice that Ishan can still see the data. So Ishan now is able to see the actual data because he's been assigned to a security role that doesn't have any filters on it, but he needs to be assigned to one due to um, having viewer access on the Power BI report itself. So the takeaway here is ensure that all of your users with viewer access have been assigned to a specific security role, whether it's no security or dynamic or low security or some security applied on it. So, we hope you enjoyed this video. Again, dynamic role level security is extremely important in a Power BI model, especially when you're dealing with information that is sensitive and you wanna ensure that the information that a user sees is the right information that they are supposed to see. So if you like this video, please be sure to uh, give us a like and subscribe. If there are any other sort of use cases or challenges that you're facing within Power BI, we'd love to hear about them in the comments. So feel free to comment on the video. And if you enjoyed this video and you're interested in learning more about our company, FP and Automation, please feel free to visit our website at fpandautomation.co and feel free to contact us if you'd like to learn more about our company right here. If you're also interested in some of our newsletters and blogs, you can also check out our blog and you'll be able to check out our latest blogs and newsletters that are out there that our team is constantly putting out there. Thank you in advance, everybody, for watching this video. And this is Alf Actinus at FP and Automation signing out.